Hi, this is how to do things with T-splines and other stuff using Fusion 360. This tutorial is more about modeling theory than showing how to use specific things or use specific tools. I'd consider this a basic advanced tutorial. It's somewhat of an experiment and I hope it's helpful. I've added some links in the description below to some other videos I think might be helpful. Ready? Go! So what makes Fusion different from all the other parametric modelers out there is that there are three main modeling methods instead of just the standard solid and surface modeling. T-spline modeling means that we can make complex geometry much faster, but it does have some distinct challenges and we'll try and cover those here. Essentially, T-spline modeling brings a polymodeling approach into a parametric modeling environment, but it doesn't quite behave as consistently as regular polymodeling, so we'll try and cover some of these limitations and see what we can do about it. The biggest step you can make into getting the most out of Fusion is to not treat each modeling approach as completely separate from each other, but instead use the advantages of each method to get the result you're looking for. If we look at all of these methods, the surface or patch can be knitted together to become a solid, and a T-spline or sculpt body can become a patch, which can become a solid, or if the geometry is closed, it can become a solid itself. We'll dive into this a bit more later, but let's cover some theory around T-splines first. This is a T-spline body. You can move the edges around and do stuff with it, but what we want to do here is make sure that we do this with purpose. I don't want this to become some video riddled with terminology, so I'm just going to give you two more for now. I'm not even sure if these are the right terms, but this is how I learned. This is a loop, and this is a ring. I'm sure you can find tons of polymodeling videos out there that go into like mind-numbing detail for how these things affect the model, but there's only one that's stuck in my mind, and that's simply ring around the detail. For example, if we want to round the size of this plane, we need to make the outer perimeter into one continuous ring. After we get rid of a couple unnecessary edges, we have what we're looking for. So let's look at what happens when we have two rings for defining our shape. The trick here becomes how to transition between the two shapes. You should try to keep all the detail levels roughly the same so that the transitions become easier. For this one, there are some parts that can just be welded together, and some parts need some additional filling geometry, which we try and keep as clean as we can. A good rule to follow here is to try and make all the faces four-sided, and to find clean rings and loops when we can. The same thing goes with more complex geometry like this. Try to match densities, weld where it makes sense to weld, and fill up the missing area with four-sided faces. And just as a quick note before we continue, when working with creased edges, it automatically forces those edges to behave like a ring. This is a pretty general statement, but whatever type of geometry you're working with, whether it's a 2D spline, T-spline, or loft profiles, less is usually better. Less control points, less edges, less whatever will tend to get you a cleaner result. Use as many points as you need to get the detail you want, but see if there's a way to pare it down. For splines, for example, these two are virtually identical, but when we look at the curvature, the one with less control points has a much cleaner geometry. If we consider creating surfaces or something from this and how everything is built on top of it, the one with more control points would be more likely to cause problems as we continue to build the model. The same thing goes with T-splines. Use just enough density to get the detail you need, and try not to add extra where it isn't necessary. If we look at a basic model, like the handle on a garden hose nozzle, we can start to see some of these ideas in practice. There are a few rings that define the edge details, and the most challenging part is to figure out how to transition between them in a clean way. If we try and match up the edges on the three rings, we end up with something like this. It's possible there is a cleaner solution to this, but for rendering purposes, it's fine as it is. So now we'll start looking into some common problems with T-splines. The biggest problem is trying to maintain clean curvature. Certain geometry types just don't play well in fusion. This is a very basic example of a curvature problem. There are just too many edges meeting at one point. Not only that, the surrounding faces are all three-sided. Basically, Fusion doesn't like it when 1. 
there's a face that has anything other than four sides, and two, there's an intersection where a loop goes off in a different direction. Essentially, anything other than a plus. But sometimes these problems are unavoidable when you're trying to model something complex. This is the most basic example. Sometimes there are just no other options to making this type of geometry. But because we have loops that don't result in a plus, we get a pinch in the curvature. Y surfaces. Doing this with standard surface modeling can be a real pain, but this is quite easy with T-splines. However, we do see the same curvature problem in the center, so just keep that in mind. While we're talking about curvature, this is where things start to get interesting. When we're working with T-splines, we don't need to feel constrained or trapped in a sculpt environment. For example, we can create a couple bodies using T-splines, then manage the transition between them using patch surfacing and still maintain continuity. Just note that if you go back in the timeline to edit the base geometry, you may have to redefine the lofted transition when you're finished. T-splines gives us yet another way to do this, by using the match function. It's less precise and it won't update parametrically, but it could be helpful when the transition is much more complicated. Just be sure to modify your stitching tolerance if you're having trouble knitting these surfaces together. Transitions between surfaces are the key to a good model. Anyone can create the base surfaces by watching a tutorial on YouTube, but figuring out the transitions is where you'll spend most of your time on difficult models. Let's continue to dive into combining modeling methods. This is an approach that I use quite often for complex models. It's the idea of overbuilding surfaces that are then trimmed back to give the result you want. This is slower and more challenging than directly modeling with T-splines, but it has the potential to produce a much cleaner result. As an example, here's a model of a bumper. Well, half of one anyway. Modeled three different ways. This first one is only T-splines. It follows most of what I talked about earlier, and there are some parts of this that may look a bit odd. That's just me trying to figure out a way to save it. Because when I turn the smoothing back on, we see a model that simply doesn't come together the way we want. If this were standard poly modeling, the result would have been much more forgiving. So let's look at another way. This takes a hybrid approach where the base form is sculpted, then we create extra bodies to trim out the internal details. Without spending time on refinement, we see a couple little pinches in the geometry, but this gets us most of the way there fairly quickly. The third way is strictly an overbuild approach. The benefit of directly modeling with T-splines is that we have full control over the edges of the geometry. This overbuild approach doesn't give us that ability, so making sure the surfaces intersect where you want them to will be the biggest challenge here. For this one, I built a quick spline cage, which you can make by using the move command on the vertices of a spline. This spline cage will help us position the surfaces and fine tune the intersections. After we create our overbuilt surfaces, we can use trim in the patch commands and stitch the resulting surfaces together. 3D sketches are sometimes helpful for complex models. You saw earlier a quick spline cage that is just made by moving around the points of a spline using the move command. This is rather than just moving the spline points around normally. One thing to pay attention to here is the spline handles. If you don't modify the handles of the spline in 2D, when you go to make it 3D, the handles will become locked. In many cases, this won't matter, but if we need more control of the spline, edit the spline handles first before moving it around in 3D. This will allow us to move the spline handles around as well. Modeling a car. Well, sort of. These are just thrown together really quick to show how both methods might come together for a more complex model. The first would be for a hybrid T-spline and surface modeling approach, and the second would be for an overbuild approach. The first one is easier to manage and get the shape you want, but the second will result in cleaner surface geometry. The next step for each of these models would be to make the necessary trims to define the base geometry, then begin defining details. Details in this case could mean finding a more precise way to transition two surfaces. So, this may mean trimming out a certain section of the geometry, then creating a lofted section to get the transition you are looking for. So now, let's look at a more practical example of how T-splines and parametric modeling might come together. Before, we looked at modeling part of a garden hose nozzle, and now we'll look at another part. The base of this model is made with T-splines, but say we wanted to add some grip details. The easiest way to do this would be to use the base T-spline as the outer surface, make a copy, then define the inner surface. We could do this with T-splines as well, 
but it'll be easiest if we just make a simple patch surface instead. We can take the copy of the model, trim out the section where we want the grip to be, define a curve for the profile, then use that profile to create a patch surface. I'm using the patch tool here instead of a loft because Fusion doesn't have the ability yet to constrain the continuity on guide rails. Patch allows me to maintain curvature on all the edges. Now this inner body will be our main part and we'll chop up the outer body to become our grip. Now we just combine it all together and we end up with something that went from T-splines to surfaces to a final solid part. Alright, that's it. Good luck. I'm out.